What's up, guys? Sean here, Mostly Metal. Uh, I'm here to enter a contest uh, by Matt over at the Accusation Network. Uh, he recently hit 2,000 subscribers, so congrats to Matt. Nicely done. Um, he has a KISS-themed contest he's running where he has eight, uh, I believe it's album titles by KISS, and he's kind of put themes around each one. Uh, so I am going to uh, talk about those. Uh, this is going to be kind of fun because it's not just talking about records, but it's also some personal stuff uh, that he wants you to mention. So we will get into that here shortly. First, we're drinking Chrome by Phase 3 out of Chicago. It's an IPA. It's very thick. You can't see through it. it smells like pineapples. A little dry. Delicious. Very hoppy, too. Uh, so first off, hotter than hell. Uh, so Matt says, show me an album cover or a song that depicts fire flames or the burning pits of hell. Should be easy for us metalheads. Um, then tell me about the hottest place you've ever visited and why you were there. So I'm going to cheat a little bit on this one and one of the other ones. I have two that I want to talk about, if that's okay. Um, the first one is 2018's Burst Into Flame by the band Haunt. A great, um, I would say, new wave of British heavy metal um, I hate to say that because it makes you think of certain bands, and I think Haunt kind of has their own sound and style while still adopting some of the, uh, sorry, earlier, um, 70, late 70s, early 80s, new wave of British heavy metal. Um, this is kind of a one-man band, if I remember correctly. Trevor, I can't remember his name for some reason. Trevor Church, his dad played bass for uh, Montrose and Sammy Hagar. So he comes from some, some good genes there. But I think he plays most um, most of the instrumentation on this. Uh, they are from Fresno, California, and this is out on Shadow Kingdom. Great stuff. I'll link it below. Um, then the other album I wanted to talk about, this is kind of a out-of-left-field one. And I didn't think these were flames on the back, but with the title of it, I thought it might apply anyway, and I wanted to talk about it anyway. And um, this is... Hellbillies in Hell, Country Music's Tormented Testament, 1952 to 1974, uh, volume 666. This came out on Record Store Day. Um, the 666 copies, there were three colors and 222 of each color. Uh, I got the red one, which we see here, and you see the flames on the label there. Um, I think it came out in some kind of a weird Lucifer's orange or something like that, and then tormented black, I think is what they call it. Essentially just black vinyl. Um, this is a cool release. It's some obscure country songs that deal with Satan. Um, you're not going to hear, you know, Hank Williams and Johnny Cash and all this other stuff. I'd, I had not um, been familiar with many of these um, song titles. Wild She-Devil, um, The Gates of Hell. Get Behind Me, Satan, etc. There's the back. Uh, it also has a, an OBI strip, which is pretty cool. Um, I did some research in the liner notes, and what I thought was cool is the first song on side A and the last song on side B are both by the same person, and they're actually the same song, but um, side A is Panic a Trip. Um, it's kind of a psychedelic instrumental. Apparently this guy played with um, Johnny Paycheck, um, who many of you probably know. Um, he was a Nashville session musician, played with Johnny Cash, Charlie Pride, etc. But he recorded this instrumental, um, Normal, um, in the studio. But they were running out of time and money and had to do a side B. For those of you who know 45, you have a side A and side B. That was very popular back then. Um, so he said, well, why don't we just um, reverse the tape on the side A, the song that we recorded, Panic at Trip, play it backwards and record that as side B. So that's what they did. They thought it would be, first, it was a time saver. You don't have to re-record anything. You just play the song backwards. Um, and then the two, they thought it would kind of uh, screw with people. So if you look here, side A, first song is Panic at Trip. And then the last song, same guy, he just reversed the words. Um, so it's technically pert a, a panic. or it's He just reversed everything. I'm not going to try to spell it out and so he thought it would screw with people um, and it, it worked um, so I, I can only imagine people putting that that on it wasn't really backwards masking but kind of one of the first people in my research that that did something like that so shout out to him 
Uh, the place I visited, how does place I visit was Mexico. Um, I was not there to go to a resort or anything. I went to a border town uh, many years ago. Um, if you've seen any of the news in the last, I don't know, 10 to 15 years, um, there's a big cartel war going on down there in Mexico primarily, but there's some border issues too. Um, and a lot of that's happening in Nuevo Laredo, and that's where my smart self went. Uh, this was before all that started, though. Um, Nuevo Laredo is on the Mexico side, and then Laredo, Texas is on the USA side, obviously. Um, we went to Texas just for fun. I mean, a few buddies drove down there, and we were driving down. And once you hit Texas, we had, a, you know, the thermometer on the inside of the car that tells you how hot it is out there. And it was, you know, hit 70, and then half an hour later, 75, 80, 85. It just kept going down, 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 down. Um, we got to Laredo, I think it was 110, give or take. Once it gets over a certain degree, it doesn't really matter. Um, my buddy wanted to go there to check out what you could get in Mexico. Um, primarily, he was big into uh, weightlifting and wanted to see, and you hear you can get anything in Mexico. He's like, oh, well, we'll see about that. So we went over there, and of course, we bought, you can buy tequila for like five bucks a bottle. We got a bunch of beer, tecate, and whatnot. And when you cross the border of Mexico, if you've never been there, especially in a border town, you come up. And, and it's like you're coming into a other world, and there's all these guys there, nicely dressed, and like, hey, hey, gringo, you know, come over here. Like, you want girls, you want drugs, blah, blah, blah. My buddy's like, no, man, we're not interested in any of that. He's like, I'm looking for steroids. And I thought, oh, yeah, right, like that. That's like they're going to have that here when you're looking around at dirt roads, and um, there's a woman changing a baby's diaper openly there on the street. And he's like, follow me. I'm like, dude, I don't have a good feeling about this. So we were walking a few blocks, um, and we come up to a place that it says something like veterinarian on the outside, and I'm like, dude, you know this is not a real vet. Um, walk in, and there's like a poster of a horse, and a poster of a dog, and a cat, um, and then there's this old Mexican dude sitting behind the counter, and there's this huge curtain uh, behind him, and my buddy's like, tell him, tell him what you want. Um, or the, the, our guide says, tell this guy what you want. And my buddy's like, okay, I want this, this, and this. And I looked at my buddy, and I'm like, here. So the old man turns around, and he takes the curtain and goes like, whoosh, goes like that. And I'm talking a wall of vials of God only knows what, but everything you can imagine. And the guy went, whoop, 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 um, said, you know, uh, however much it was in American dollar. If you don't, the American dollar um, translates very well down there to pesos. So um, I'll leave the story there. There's a lot more to it that I could tell, but um, we're going to pause on that. Um, next up, Dress to Kill. Um, show me an album cover or a song that depicts at either extremely fancy dress or no dressing at all. Then tell me about an outfit or style dress you wore as a kid that you wouldn't be caught dead in now. Um, I also have two for this. Um, this one just because I thought it was funny and I wanted to talk about it and I came across it when I was doing my uh, research. But this is um, This Ain't No White Christmas by Rudy Ray Moore, a.k.a. Dolomite. Uh, I just thought it was funny. I love the album cover. And I this is a reissue that came out in 2001, I think. Um, rated triple X for mature, adults only. Um, it's very offensive to... Uh, many. It's kind of him kind of riffing. Some of it's uh, stand-up, some of it's music. Uh, it's kind of a mixture of both. A lot of it's live, but very, very funny. Um, and then the other one is called, I can't ever remember the name because it's so long. We Rose From Our Bed With The Sun In Our Head. This is a uh, dual disc from Swans uh, out of New York. A uh, great, great band. Um, this was done. Uh, there's also some nudity. No dress on the back there. Um, this was a dual disc that they put out to help fund the um, the Seer sessions. There's some nudity there too for y'all. Um, they put this out on Young Guy Records. If you don't know, that's Michael Gear's label. Um, he put this out. It sold out quickly. Um, he also signs pretty much everything that you buy Swans related. I don't know how that big dent got in there, but 
Um, this is more live sessions and stuff they were working out um, that eventually ended up on the Seer, so it's kind of cool to hear the, the early versions of these before they um, made it onto the studio in official version. If you're not familiar with Swans, highly, highly recommend. And then what would I be... What, <clears throat> excuse me, what would I not be caught dead in now that I used to wear? Um, it'd probably be a tie between corduroy pants that I used to have just because they were hand-me-downs. We didn't have a lot of money. Um, or perhaps parachute pants um, from my breakdancing days. Uh, if you don't remember, they were real silky pants with some zippers in them so you were doing your breakdancing moves. You could slide across the floor and stuff and my puma jacket was on with the zipper in the front. Um, and I could pull the sleeve down and do hand spins. Used to be able to do that before I weighed a lot more. So, yeah, I don't know that I would wear that today. Uh, next up's uh, Destroyer. Show me an album cover or song that depicts someone or something in the act of destruction. Then tell me about your own tale of destruction, however you choose to define that. This was a hard one for me to find. And this was the closest I could get to. Um, but this is uh, Retaliation by Carnivore. Um, this is actually a dual disc with um, Retaliation and Carnivore on the disc. This came out in 91 on Roadrunner. Uh, for those that don't know, Carnivore is Pete Steele's first, well, first bigger band uh, before he um, decided to join Typo or form Typo Negative. I wouldn't say this sounds like Typo Negative. Um, there's hints of it just because of Pete Steele's voice. Um, but there's not any keyboards or anything. This is more straight hardcore. Um, not in the tough guy hardcore like you think. Just real raw, brutal rock slash hardcore music. Uh, Jack Daniels and Pizza was the first song I heard of this, which really isn't a song. It's just someone throwing up for a minute. Um, but the next song, Angry Neurotic Catholics. That was the first song I heard on college radio years ago. And what prompted me to go track this down. So, good stuff. And I was never really a destructive person, pretty laid back for the most part, I would say. Um, I kind of went through a phase in my life where I was drinking and doing, um, smoking a lot of weed, I guess is the most destructive thing I've ever done. Um, don't eat right, or I hadn't, there were periods of my life where I did not eat right at all. I could eat a whole pizza, uh, smoke a lot of weed, drink a lot of beer, that's destructive to your body. Um, one time I had weed that was laced with cocaine. Don't recommend that. Um, I don't know if it was a mixture of the two, but not being able to feel my body and feel like I'm, I'm up there looking down at myself. I don't see why people like that, but that's um, to each their own. Next up, we're going to do Love Gun. Um, show me an album cover or a song that depicts either firearms or larger projectile weaponry such as cannons or catapults. Could use that carnivore, I guess. Oh, those aren't cannons or catapults. Missiles. Close enough. Um, then tell me your story involving either guns or getting a girl or guy. Um, so I had a couple albums with guns on the cover. And this one is Scorn by Primitive Man. Uh, this is the relapse version uh, that came out on came out after the original on brown vinyl if you're interested in that um, primitive man are a band i believe they're out of colorado could be completely wrong on that um this is just brutal relentless uh, grind slash whatever you want to call it I, I have a hard time describing primitive man um, but good stuff nonetheless um as far as guns or getting a girl i bought my first ar-15 a couple years ago I uh, probably could have shown that. Um, and getting a guy or a girl, it's been years since I've had to do that. So my current wife, I guess, current wife, my wife, um, we've been, we were friends before we got married, been together for 15 some years. So that's my, probably my story of uh, hooking and reeling one in. Um, Unmasked. Show me an album cover song that depicts the revealing of something or someone. Then tell me about one of your favorite Halloween costumes. So this is going to be a little different. And I don't know if this was the intent of this question, but we're going to roll with it. Um, this is Power by Ice-T. Um, classic 90s um, rap. If you know Ice-T, he's in the metal band Body Count. He's also on one of the Law & Order shows. I can never remember which one. 
But what's revealing on this album cover is the only person holding a gun is the lady. And then if you flip it over, Ice-T's got a gun, and so is the other guy. I can't remember if that's the DOC. I don't remember who the other guy is, but that's what's revealing there. Great, great album, though, if you're um, wanting to dive into Ice-T. Check them out. Um, and then favorite Halloween costumes. I actually found pictures, which I'm going to attempt to insert either up up here maybe during the video i have not done inserting pictures before so we'll see what happens but i have two um one is an army guy i went to a, a military surplus store and got some face paint if i remember right uh, a fake gun helmet um the other one was boba fett from star wars and also you folks that have apple tv have watched the mandalorian um, boba fett's always been my favorite character um, of star wars i do not have apple tv though so hope to one day uh, be able to check out the Mandalorian. I always thought he was kind of it was kind of cool. He was a bounty hunter and kind of the outlaw, so to speak, of Star Wars. So, big shout out to uh, Boba Fett. Um, let's see here, Creatures of the Night. Um, show me an album cover or a song that depicts vampires, werewolves, or other mythical beings who lurk in the shadows. Then tell me about one of your wildest nighttime stories. Um, again, in metal, this is pretty easy, or this could be technically easy to find. Which one did I go with, though? I'm trying to find which one it was. Oh, this is, um, because I have different covers here. I want to make sure I get the right one. Uh, this is Howls of Ebb. Um, this is Curse, Cursus Impasse, Impasse, the Pendiomic Vows. I can never pronounce it. Um. But this came out on I Void Hanger. This came out in 2016, I believe. Yeah, 2016. Uh, if you like uh, Gore Guts, Portal, um, some of that weird Imperial Triumphant type stuff, um, Howls of Ebb is right up your alley. Um, I think they broke up in 2016, but they have, I think they have all their albums, three or four of them. They're all fucking fantastic. I don't know what's on the cover here. Let me take this out of the case so you can actually see it and not really have any glare. I don't know what these beings are on the front, um, but they are scattered about on the front and on the CD as well. There's some weird shit going on, some weird mythical uh, creatures, which is very fitting for Howl's of Ebb. Um, and then the question was... One of my f wildest nighttime stories. Well, I got a few of those. Um, probably the biggest one. I may have told this when I did one of my Ticket Stub videos, but I went to see Pantera in Chicago many years ago. Um, took a few friends up in my car, and we ended up meeting some other friends up there that, that went in their car. Um, long story short, after the show, we were supposed to go to some party on the way home. Um, that didn't pan out. And the other car of friends was... Oh, probably 100 yards ahead of us. Um, about 1, 2 in the morning, and looking way ahead, I saw some deer come across the road in front of them. They swerved to miss the deer, and when they came back, another deer came from the other way and smacked them. Um, and we were, you know, we're doing 65 on the interstate, coming behind them. We come through all this deer dust, and there's just stuff everywhere, and there are cars on the side of the road. The front end's bashed in. Um, we were at a Pantera show because you can imagine people were uh, a little intoxicated. I was not. I was driving and being responsible. Um, but I had a Honda Civic. Um, I had four guys in my car. They had four guys in their car. They did not want to call the police for obvious reasons. Um, my buddy's car was, you know, it was a beater. He didn't care. He's like, let's just leave it. And I'm like, well, how are you guys going to get home? Um, he said, we're just going to pile in your car. So my Honda Civic had one of those deals where you put a key in the back seat and turn it and the, the seats all folded down. So we had myself, a guy in the middle where the stick shift was, and another guy over here. Three guys sitting on the, like the edge of the back seats that were folded down and two guys laying down from the trunk to the back seat. So we had eight 20-ish year old guys in the car. Um, drugs were everywhere, smelled like booze. Driving down the interstate, my car was way down. Um, and I look in my rear view, and a state cop's coming up behind us. I'm like, oh, God. 
Uh, I was doing the speed limit. I had it on cruise. Everything was cool. He slowly came around the side. Um, and I kind of looked over and I gave him one of these, you know, how you doing? And I don't know if he got another call or he didn't want to deal with the paperwork and what he was going to find. He just went on his way. So could have been a lot worse, but it's a story I, I still like to tell. Um, next up, Asylum. Um, show me an album cover or a song that depicts insanity, committal to a mental facility, or on the path to losing your mind, then tell me about one of the craziest dudes you ever met. Um, so this one, I don't know if this is actually in a, a sane asylum or what. It's obviously some kind of weird something or other, but this is Necrology by General Surgery. Um, this is a limited edition of 2000. You can see down here in the corner. This came out on uh, Relapse in the 90s. I still have the, uh, the sticker, uh, the Relapse sticker, same bad taste, um, great new look, uh, the CD, and then the inside uh, folds out into a, if I could get the damn thing open, poster. I got this at Best Buy, and I bought it on a whim, son of a bitch, um, just because it looked cool, and it's on relapse. Um, again, this is pre-internet. I had no idea um, what was going to be on the inside, but there's a general surgery poster. To me, this is some kind of weird insane asylum thing where the guy is crazy and they're drilling a hole in his brain or in his chest. I don't know. I could be way off there, but that was the best I could find. Sanitarium was not the obvious choice by Metallica, but I figured others were going to talk about that. Um, and then the craziest dude I ever met... Probably a guy named Mike Basham. Um, we went way back. Um, went through a lot of strange times with him. He was a very... Um, one of those disturbed folks. Very destructive, but very nice as well. Um, went through a lot of car crashes together. Um, drugs. Um, him dealing with women. Um, he, he made a lot of bad choices um, in his life, but um, was a really great person. He ended up taking his own life, I think, about four years ago. Um, he had ended up moving to Vegas, and we kind of lost touch. He moved out there to be closer to his kids. I'm one of those people that always try to do the right thing, but things always seem to go wrong for him. Um, sometimes they were his fault, sometimes not, uh, but he would snap at the drop of a hat for something as small as a parking place and then the same day buy your dinner for you you know what i mean he was one of those people um killed himself um that's back when i was on facebook and i found out i don't i never heard the details didn't really want to know the details but um we had a lot of great times together too so um good memories for um, my buddy mike uh, last but not least Revenge. Show me an album cover or song that depicts any sort of payback, vendetta, or just... It says just desserts. I think that might be uh, a typo, or I pasted it wrong. Um, tell me about a time, then tell me about a time you got some sweet revenge or somebody got revenge on you. Um, so this one is going to be out of left field, too. This is not a metal release. Apologies to you metalheads to end on a rap note. Um, but To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar. Um, to me, this spoke revenge because there's a lot of um, African Americans, if you can see that, um, in front of the White House. And the, the white guy is the white politicians down here, and they've all got money. Um, so to me, it kind of symbolized revenge um, in a way. Um, as far as getting revenge again i'm a pretty low-key person um i would say there was someone that i dated that uh, i would say probably didn't treat me too well um but after we broke up she ended up getting pregnant by a guy that left her and left her high and dry and she i don't think i mean i don't know to this day this was years ago but i don't think she ever i uh, really turned it around of course you feel bad for the kid but it's kind of like um Oh, you think things are so much better. Go off and do your own thing. Um, and things didn't quite turn out the way she thought. So there's a couple stories I have like that. But sweet, sweet, sweet revenge. When you tend to try to make something of yourself, um, and you do, and other people that think they're better than you um, don't quite have the same luck. So 
that's my addition for the um, entry for um, Matt over there at the Accusation Network. Again, congrats on 2,000 subs. Um, I'm close to 100 subs. I'm going to do a contest when I get to 100. So that is it. Um, I've got some more t-shirts coming, and I do have a collection update, and we're going to go into the vault again soon. So hopefully make some videos um, soon this weekend. Another crappy weather um, weekend looks like coming, um, but there is a Super Bowl and stuff this weekend, so I do enjoy partaking a little bit in the festivity, so we'll see what I get to. But thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make your own video. Support Matt and subscribe to his channel, and I'll catch you all later.